All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking the Miami Heat. They are the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, and the play-in tournament is officially set. Now, I made a Miami Heat video yesterday talking about how they're pretty much being disrespected. Like, they deserve your respect. They deserve your attention. And it feels really goofy to say that about a one seed, but I feel like you could look at both the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference, and you have probably the two most overall talented teams in the entire NBA, and it's almost like both of them are getting overshadowed. In Miami's case, you have a top five defense. You have a top 10 offense. You're riding a little win streak. Granted, um, keep in mind, Regular season at the time of this recording is not officially over, but we do have the playing tournament officially set. The seventh seed will be the, or the seventh team, I guess, will be the Brooklyn Nets. The eighth team will be the Cleveland Cavaliers. Nine, you have the Hawks. Ten, you have the Hornets. Now, we actually have a tweet here from Heat Muse about the Miami record against each team. The Nets, the Heat this season, three and one. The Cavs, one and two. That is by far the worst um, of all four of the play-in tournament teams. Three and one against the Hawks, and then four ago against four and zero against the Charlotte Hornets. Now, before we get into this video, actually, if you guys enjoy it, hit the like button, hit that sub button. Uh, posting a lot of Heat content, getting ready for the playoffs, and uh, you know, getting ready for the play-in tournament that officially starts tomorrow. Let's try and hit 100 likes on today's video. That would be absolutely awesome. Every Heat video I make gets a lot of love, a lot of comments, a lot of likes from Heat Nation, so I appreciate you guys so much. Now, Miami, to me, I don't think they would lose, actually, against any of these four teams. So that's the good news. Now, let's take a look at this seventh seed, because whoever gets this seventh seed is going to be... It's almost going to be a little bit critical. Now, unfortunately, at the time of this recording, we don't really know who's going to be the two seed, but... You have the Brooklyn Nets and you have the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, if you ask me who is winning that game, as impressive as the, as the Cleveland Cavaliers season has been, I just think the Brooklyn Nets end up winning that basketball game. So they'll be the seventh seed, in my opinion. So I you know, don't think Miami really is going to have to worry about the Brooklyn Nets until they really actually have to. Now, looking at 9-10, and 10, Hawks versus the Hornets, that's going to be another interesting basketball game. I guess it really could go either way. If I had to give a prediction, I would probably go with the Atlanta Hawks just because they're a pretty talented basketball team. Cavs, Hornets, um, you know, kind of gets me back to the original point of whether it's the Cavs, Hawks, or the Hornets, to just be quite honest with you guys, I don't think the Miami Heat end up losing. Even if they were to somehow play the Brooklyn Nets, although, like I said, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that's very, 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 very unlikely. The 3-1 and one record against the Brooklyn Nets is definitely promising, but keep in mind, like, a lot of stuff just happens throughout the regular season that I wouldn't put too much stress onto, you know, who, who Miami plays in the first round. They're the first seed in the Eastern Conference for a reason. And here's kind of what I'll say about this to just kind of squash it is if the Miami Heat or any first round team is worried about who you're going to play in the first round, you have bigger issues. Like, you just have, you have much bigger issues. So if I see people talking about the Heat saying, uh-oh, you know, the Atlanta Hawks might give them a little bit of trouble, the Cavs, the Nets, the Hornets, they might give them a little bit of trouble. It's like, well, if they're going to give them a little bit of trouble, so is every other team that they're bound to play in the Eastern Conference, regardless of who's hot, who's not, or what have you. If you're having second thoughts about the Miami Heat, at this current point thinking about oh shoot they're one and two against the Cavs what if they pull off the seven game series that's not the right framework to have like I said top five defense will get you as far as you let them top 10 offense like you have all the intangibles you have everything you could possibly need for a deep playoff run I look at this heat team and I think of guys like Kyle Lowry I think of guys like PJ Tucker Jimmy Butler, players who have been in the league for a, more than a handful of seasons. They have been in finals games. They have been in Eastern Conference finals games. They've won various awards. I look at Kyle Lowry with the Toronto Raptors. I look at P.J. Tucker last year with the Milwaukee Bucks. 
there's a lot of things about this Miami Heat team that goes past the statistics. Yes, you do have nice defensive stats. You have nice offensive stats. You have nice stats in general. But overall, whether or not you think Miami is going to win it all, you at least have to give them respect because they have everything you could possibly need. You have bench threats and Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, Max Struess has been nice for him. You have Bam Adebayo, who is an all-star, 18 and 10. Like, give this man the respect he deserves. We've talked about Jimmy. We've talked about Kyle Lowry. We've talked about PJ. They just have so many different pieces that I'm really not worried whatsoever. Now, if I had to root for a team to get that eight seed, I'd probably go Charlotte. I'd probably go Charlotte. And, you know, keep in mind, Miami is 4-0 against them on this season. But if I really had to break it down, and it's not even necessarily a record-based type of thing, the Cavs at 1-2, and two, they're going through a bunch of turmoil. Like, they've really just been like devastated by injuries the entire season. Obviously, Brooklyn might get Ben Simmons back. I highly, highly, highly doubt it. Um, Atlanta Hawks Eastern Conference Finals team last season you have Trey Young I just think the Charlotte Hornets as hot as they are as good of a second half of a season as they've had with LaMelo Ball you just got a bunch of talented guards there you've got Bridges like Charlotte's really talented but as far as in the bigger scope if you zoom out of the grid I feel like Charlotte is you know maybe not necessarily ahead of schedule but I would say Charlotte is a little bit more of a very raw basketball team. Cleveland's kind of a very similar situation, although I'm a little bit worried when you get Mobley and you get Jared Allen back, they could pretty much clamp up in the paint any team that they so choose. And if you have a really good series from guys like Darius Garland, if you have a really good series from Karras, if you have a really good series from Isaac, I wouldn't be surprised if the Cleveland Cavaliers somehow find a way to upset a team if they end up getting an eighth seed so or a top eight seed so that's really it for today i'd love to hear down below where do you see the miami heat making it once the playoffs are over how far do you see them advancing essentially hit the like button hit that sub button i'll see you guys later